Hold a face lamp to show thy Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combine. splendor by the open grave. Show me the light from heaven's burning portal. Show me the glory held in Jordan's way. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combine me till night shall vanish in eternal day. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you this morning for the opportunity and the blessing that we have to be here among this group of Christians. Our church family, Father, as we bow before you together, we see you delivering us bit by bit from this pandemic, Father. We know that everything happens on your time, and we're thankful, Father, that it happens that way because when you're done with it, you're done. And we're so thankful, Father, for your blessings. As we look out among our church family, we see those that are, that are not here because they are sick or they have had surgery. And we miss them, Father. We pray that under your divine power that they will be back among our number sooner more than later. We also notice those that have chosen not to be here, and we miss them also, Father. And we pray that you will warm their hearts and, and make them feel like they need to be here, just like we need to be here. We're thankful, Father, for the elders that we have here at Mount Pleasant. We're thankful for how hard they've worked to keep us safe and still be able to worship together. And we pray that you'll bless them for their efforts. We're thankful for everyone that works on and presents a lesson here, Father, because there's only good to be gained from it. We're thankful for Brother Tom, and we pray that you'll bless him as he gets ready to deliver a lesson himself this morning. Pray that you'll guide him and help him to remember the things that he's chosen to speak on. We pray that you'll open our hearts, Father, as we sit here and listen to it, that it will enhance our daily lives when we leave here and we'll walk as Christians outside these doors like we do inside of them. Father, we know we're sinful people, weak people, And we pray that you'll forgive us of our shortcomings and our sins. We thank you, Father, for 
the Holy Spirit that encourages us, thankful for Jesus and for the example he set in life, for the sacrifice that he freely gave in death, and we're the most thankful, Father, for his resurrection. This morning, together, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, please pay careful attention to the words that we sing as we reflect on Jesus' life and the great story that is fact of his going to the cross for our sins. Tell me the story of Jesus right on my... Do you feel, feel special this morning? Yes. You should. We're about to do something that very few people all over the world are taking part in. Remembering our Lord and Savior in this manner, the manner that he commanded us to remember him. When he instituted what we refer to as the Lord's Supper, on the night that he was betrayed, he made this a commandment. Some of us are old enough to remember when Sunday was truly a special day. Stores were not open. People didn't work. The government realized and understood at that time Sunday was a special day. And then things changed. This has never changed for the Christian to remember Christ on Sunday. On the first day of the week, when we gather together in a body such as this, we are to do this partake of the emblems, the bread and the wine, the fruit of the vine that God, that Jesus commanded us to do in remembering him. We live all live in a busy world. We have many things on our mind, but we have the opportunity this morning to put those things aside and remember the one who died for us. You know, the beautiful song we just sang. Remember Jesus. And what he did for us. Bow with me as we give thanks for the bread. God, we thank you so much for this opportunity this morning to remember your son and our Savior. the sacrifice that he made for us. That through his sacrifice, we have a hope of eternal life someday with you. God, we ask now that bless this loaf as we partake of this, we pray that we can see Christ as he hangs between heaven and earth on that cruel cross, suffered, bled, and died for us. It's his 
in his name that we ask these things. Amen. Join me as we give thanks for the cup. In like manner, Lord, we ask you to bless this cup. To us as Christians, represents Christ's blood that was shed on the cross for us. And knowing and understanding that that blood that was shed so long ago still has the same power to cleanse us each day to wash away our sins we ask you to bless this cup in Jesus name Amen This concludes our remembrance of our Savior, but we're also instructed, commanded upon the first day of the week to give back to the church a portion of that which we have earned. And we're also instructed to do this cheerfully The money that we give today funds everything that our leadership here at Mount Pleasant designates for us to support. Not only activities in our own community, but in other parts of the world. We all can take joy in the fact, be cheerful, that we're taking part in that, to spread God's word, which is our duty. Bow with me. God, we thank you so much for the great nation that we live in, and especially here in our community. We live in a community that has many opportunities. We're fortunate in that regard. We not only have the ability to make what we need to survive, but we have abundance. God, we always hope and pray that we will not use from the abundance to give to you, but you're first in our minds, in our thoughts, and that's where our duty lies in our giving, is to you. We pray, God, that the gift this morning will touch lives, further the borders of your kingdom, bring people closer to you and it's in Christ's name we pray amen if you didn't notice or visiting with us the collection plates are at each door as you exit or you might have already done that but if you haven't they're at each doorway going out drop your contribution in the collection plate thank you
We're going to sing all to Jesus, I surrender. Um, before the lesson, this was requested by Tom uh, to go with the lesson. Would you please stand with me? Our scripture reading for today will be from Luke chapter 18, verse 22. Luke 18, verse 22. When Jesus heard this, he proclaimed to him, There is one thing you still lack. Give all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. Matthew, thank you very much for doing a great job in uh, doing our scripture reading. PJ, wonderful job in leading singing today. Good morning to everybody. They're already up. Look at them. Thank you for bringing your Bibles. Uh, we're still in our series, uh, the book of Luke, the greatest story ever told. From Luke, the physician, the doctor who looks back at the life of Jesus and teaches us great, valuable messages. Uh, tonight at six, we'll not have a presentation from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, but we will be reading some selections from the book of Proverbs. It'll be advice to grads and others. So it'll be an abbreviated message, so we hope that you can join us at 6 o'clock tonight. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, in the stillness of the time that we can spend together, we're certainly thankful that we have the privilege to sing these great hymns, pray these prayers, focus on the communion, and give of our means, and open up the Holy Scriptures and find selections of truth that bless our lives. And truly, Today, as we exit here, we can say it was good to have been in the house of the Lord. To worship, we trust, hope, and pray in spirit and in truth, and to give you all the adoration, glory, praise that's due your name. We know there are those who can't be with us due to illness and homebound and shut in, and we miss them, and, and trust, hope, and pray that they're able to uh, maybe watch us live or a little bit later on so they can still worship. We certainly do grieve those who have lost an interest and pray for a revival and a homecoming in their heart and life. We're grateful, Father, for our body of believers that meet at this place and for the good that emanates from this location. And we pray that you'll bless our efforts and crown us with success as we seek to do what you would have us to do according to your way, will, and word. Now bless this message in the hearts and lives of every soul that's represented in this room. And we pray at the close of our message, if there be one, two, three, four, maybe others who need to name the name of Jesus and be baptized, they'll have the courage to make it known in a public way. There may be others, Father, in this room who say they're not giving their best. They've become lukewarm. And we pray for a spiritual awakening in their heart, even during this service, that at the close of our message, they can ask for prayer and forgiveness. Whatever happens today, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory as we pray our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Let's read Luke 18, 18 through 23. Luke 18, 18 through 23. Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good, but one that is God. You know, the commandments, verse 20, do not commit adultery. Do not do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he said, all these have I observed from my youth. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven. Come follow me. When he heard this, he became very sorrowful for he was very rich. You know, this morning, as you hear those words, read those words, look at those words, 
it may be that there are some of us in the room who say, well, that really doesn't apply to me. Because number one, I'm, I'm not a ruler. I say, that, that, that would apply to me. I'm not a ruler. Well, evidently, he said, it, it came from my youth up. I'm, I'm, I'm no longer a youth. And he says he was rich, and I'm not rich. Or am I? How does this apply to me? Well, according to the worldcalculator.org, if you, in your household, acquire $22,000, you're in the top 10% of the world. If your income is $35,500, you're in the top 5% of the world's income. It may be that you look at your financial portfolio, and if the combined income in your household is $51,404, you're in the top 2% of the world. Or maybe if you look at the combined income of your house and it's $70,000, you're in the top 1% of the entire world world that has 7.8 billion people in it. Sometimes when we read scripture, we say, that really doesn't apply to me. But yet it does. Because you see, the word rich is a relative term. And if you and I were to go to watch five or six NBA players who make millions and millions of dollars, we might not feel as comfortable saying that we're rich around them. But if you were to go with me to Tanzania or to some parts of the Eastern Caribbean or to India where they make a few dollars a day, we would be rich. So, so it really is a relative term. So really, what is Jesus' message to this man that we refer to as the rich young ruler? Well, what we have to do is we have to look very closely at the text. We have to look very closely beginning in verse 18. And as we begin in verse 18, it's a good thing because he recognized Jesus. He said to him, good teacher. And not only did he recognize Jesus, but he asked a really important question. Watch this. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? I mean, that's an important question. You know, Mark said a, a few things at the table, and they were all good. And, and, and one of his emphasis were on, on how special we are and how special God has made us. And how special it is to be a Christian because we have answered the question, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? We have believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We, we've taken the initiative to repent or turn from darkness to light. We, we have confessed with our lips from our mouth and in our heart that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. We have, we have literally gone in down into the water and reached the blood of Jesus. And we've been cleansed of our sins. You and I have experienced that. Most of us in this room. And th th those of us who haven't, we're praying diligently that you will. We've done, we, we, we've done this. This question that this rich young ruler asked. I, I find it fascinating that the word good is used in verse 19. Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. Now, when, when you look at that, you say, wait a minute, is Jesus not good? I mean, what, what does that mean? Well, the word good, does he realize that he's talking to deity here? And, and, and to understand that the Jews reserve the word, the word good only for God. And, and I've given you a, a great reference here, and we're going to go ahead and read it in Psalm 86, verse Five. And this is how the Jews would look at this particular passage. Psalm 86 and verse 5. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive 
abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. But, but what did he say? For you, Lord, are good. The word good was reserved in that culture for God. So Jesus tells him that. And, and, and look what he says in verses 20 and 21. Keep the law. I mean, you know, you know the Decalogue, you know the original Ten Commandments. I mean, it's, it's in Exodus chapter 20, it's repeated again in the book of Deuteronomy. I mean, it is emphasized over and over in Scripture, the original Ten Commandments. And you know what he says? I've done that. I've kept the law. And, and as a matter of fact, I was trained very early and very young. And, and from my youth, I've kept the commandments. I've kept the law. I've followed those Ten Commandments. I... I've done that. And so he was feeling pretty good about himself. Pretty smug. Pretty confident. Almost to the point of being cocky. Listen, I've done all of those things. And the fascinating thing about this passage is, Jesus knew him better than he knew himself. And knowing him better than he knew himself, he gets to the real heart of the message and the reaction of this guy we refer to as the rich Young ruler. Jesus said, wait a minute. You have kept these things from your youth. But there's one, watch this, one thing. There's one thing you lack. You know, here's a guy with, with, with bated breath. Well, what is it? I've already kept all these commandments. I've already followed the Decalogue. I know what the law says. Pray tell what could be the one thing. I know you better than you know yourself. Well, can you tell me what it is? Can, can you please enumerate for me what it might be? And in the text, without hesitation, here's what Jesus says to him in verse 22. So when Jesus heard all that he said about keeping the law and keeping the commandments and knowing the Decalogue, you still lack one thing. Sell what you have and distribute to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. That was the message. That was the message. You, you only lack one thing. That's it. You're only lacking in one thing. You, you, you're doing great in all these other areas, but, but you're only lacking in one thing. And, and look at his reaction to the response of Jesus. Verse 23, when he heard this, he was very sorrowful. And, and look at the rest of that. For he was very rich. His greatest weakness was money. And he failed the test miserably. What's your one thing? You see, everybody has one. Everybody has some challenge in his or her life. Everybody has some obstacle that they have to overcome. Everybody has some barricade they have to kick down, some barricade in their life. You know, what is your one thing? For this guy, it was his possessions. But what about ours? What would top the list? Maybe we can, maybe we can pop some peas here, all right? You know what it means to pop some peas? Well, if you're around a microphone very long, I know Andy would know this in, in communication. When you, you pop your peas, you, you get too close to the mic sometimes, and, and, and it doesn't come across like it should. But, but what would it be? For some people, it would, be, it would be power. I mean, go to Frankfurt. Watch the hobnob that goes along. Go to Washington, D.C. It is an entity to itself. Washington, D.C. is. Believe me. And what happens behind the scenes of the people who are in power? Or think about somebody who's your boss. Who's over you. And who sometimes lords it over you and, and controls you and tells you what to do, when to do it, how to do it, why to do it, where to do it, who to do it with. And power. There are some people that they can't give up their one thing. 
It's their one thing that keeps them from being everything God wants them to be. It's power. For others, it's pride. Well, you know, a guy told me one time, he said, I'm doing quite well, thank you very much. I have a six-figure income. I drive a nice vehicle. I live in one of the nicest houses. I wear some tremendous clothing. And you're telling me I need God. What do I need God for? I've got all these things. And sometimes people raise their head up and they stick their chest out. I say, I don't need God. I've got everything I need. We talked last Sunday night about how we pray and how sometimes people pray with pride saying, I'm so glad I'm not like other people. But the person who has humility can understand their total and complete dependence on God. What's your one thing? Maybe it's prestige. We had a guy in the capital city who put our radio program on. It was one minute, 740 on the AM, one minute at 750 on the FM, and about 15,000 people listen to our program every day. And the guy who put my program on almost every day used to say to me, I can't come to your church. And he said it because of his prestige. That was his one thing. For others, it's, it's, it's popularity. It, it's to be popular. And, and sometimes, you know, our young people in, in, in a desire to fit in at school, they want to be popular. And so they do the popular things and they suffer the consequences of their choices. But the idea of popularity is Huge in our culture because you certainly don't want to say anything outside the realm of the culture that's going on in the culture. Because if you do, it wouldn't be very popular. And then for others, they've allowed their possessions to possess them instead of learning to possess their possessions. And there's another P that I completely and totally left off here that is probably as relative and current today as any other that we could talk about. And I'm not going to pop it on the screen, but I'm just going to mention it to you. It's called pleasure. And we, and we live in a culture that is pleasure dominated and pleasure orientated. And so much so that it's, it's filtered into the church. And, and now, nowadays, when people go to church, they want to see a production on the stage. I mean, really, they, 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 they want the full band. Uh, they, they just want to, man, they want the presenter to be, and, and so pleasure and entertainment is a lot of people's one thing. And they're hedonistic. They, they just go for pleasure. And if you read the book of Ecclesiastes, you can see the great man Solomon. Who pursued all of these peas that are on our screen. And he found at the end of his life. The answer was to respect God, recognize God, understand God is over us and above us, and to do it God's way. Follow his law, follow his commandments, because God has, as it were, boundaries for us. And when we get outside those boundaries, we can hurt ourselves. God doesn't want us to get hurt, so he says, here are some boundaries. Live within these boundaries and you won't get hurt. If you step outside the boundaries, that's when you're going to get hurt. And so that was his one thing. Now, here's my question. What was the response to the response? How did this guy respond to what Jesus said? What he responded to in verse 23. He went away sorrowful because he was very rich. But what I want you to do is I want you to see what Jesus continues to say in the context. Luke 18, 24 through 30. So get your Bible back out at your device and let's read 24 through 30 as a culmination to 18 through 23. All right. When Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful. Here's what Jesus said. How hard it is for those who have riches 
to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't say it's wrong to have money. He didn't say that. Jesus says how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. Incidentally, verse 25, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. What a challenge. Verse 25 is. And when they heard that, they said, well, who then can be saved? That's a good question. And Peter said, you got to love this. And this is why I asked, and I appreciate him doing it. PJ leading that song just a few minutes ago. All to Jesus, I surrender. Because Peter said, Lord, we, we've left all to follow you. We left our nets behind. We left our vocation behind. We, we, we sometimes left our families behind in order to follow you. We've surrendered all. And, and look at the promise that Jesus gives in verses 29 and 30. So he said to them, assuredly, verily, without a doubt, I say to you that there is no one who has left house, parents, brother, wife, children for the sake of the kingdom of God. Now watch this, 30. Who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life. You, you know the message I get from Jesus right here? If I ask you to give up and surrender all because of the riches God has at his disposal, he can take whatever we've asked to be given up and he can multiply it. And receive it back to us in various ways. Now, do not leave here today and say, Brother Tom taught that if I give everything, that I'm going to get back three or four times as much and I'm going to become a millionaire. Didn't say that. Maybe God will give you longevity of life. Maybe he'll give you health that a lot of other people don't have today. Here's the question this morning. Do I have anything? More important than Jesus. And, and that's what I wanted you to focus in on for the next 30 to 90 seconds. Do I have anything? Power, prestige, popularity, possessions, pleasure, whatever it is, pride. Do I have anything more important than Jesus? If I do, then I can't sing the song. All to Jesus I surrender because I haven't done it. There's still something else in his place. And so the message of Luke 18, 18 through 30 is, is Jesus first and foremost in my life? And whatever he asks me to give up, am I willing by faith to give it to him? And in so doing, understanding that not only will I experience the abundant life here, John 10 and verse 10, but I have the promise of eternal security when I leave this world. And I am going to leave the world. I've also asked PJ to lead the invitation song. I am mine no more. You say, when I say I surrender all, that's what I'm saying. I'm mine no more. And so this morning, the invitation is certainly extended uh, during this platform, during this presentation, during this time to those who need to say, Jesus, first and foremost, I need to be a Christian. I need to be baptized. Or Jesus, first and foremost, I need to leave the things of the world behind and follow him. I am mine no more. PJ, let's stand and sing.
Don't have a lot of announcements this morning. Most everything uh, is in the bulletin, so if you didn't get one of those, you can grab one on your way out. I do want to draw attention to a couple of things that are in here. Uh, tonight, as senior recognition, will be following after services are concluded this afternoon. Um, between services, if you have a senior and you want to decorate their table in the fellowship hall, uh, you can do that. The doors will be left open to where you can get in there and decorate their tables uh, this afternoon. There's the elders deacons meeting, preachers meeting this afternoon at 5 o'clock also. And then next Wednesday, our summer series starts, so we'll have a different speaker every Wednesday night. So remember that and uh, try to invite as many people as we can. Uh, if you have anything else, you can get it to me, and I will make it an announcement tonight. We're so happy you have chose to be here to worship with us today. We hope that as you leave that not only have you been blessed to be here, but that you'll be able to take the message and take what prayers have been said and the songs that have been sung and utilize them in your life. We want you to come back tonight and be with us. And on Wednesday night, we are so blessed with such a wealth of of teachers who have wonderful information to share with us. Would you please stand with me as we conclude with this song? There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He tempted us with heavenly hue and framed the set men free and evermore with him could live there is a God God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this another first day of the week. 
and sparing our lives down to this present time so we can come together as your people to raise up our voices and to glorify your name. Father, we thank you for this congregation. We thank you for the leadership we have in place here. Father, we pray that you'll be with each and every one of them families, Father, that lead this congregation, that you'll give them the knowledge and they'll always look to you for guidance in every way. And Father, we pray that you'll be with those who are sick and at home and those who are ministering to them, Father, and we pray that you'll be with those who are having health issues, Father, and we pray that you'll lay your healing hands upon them and bring them back to their normal health. Pray that you'll be with those who are nursing homes and hospitals. And Father, we thank you so much for the lesson that's been brought, brought to us today, Father. We pray, Father, that you, we will look at each other, each one of us will look at ourselves and that we will surrender all to you and to give everything that we can, Father, to do your will. And, Father, be the right example toward others. Father, we thank you for the teachers we have here. We thank you for the dedication they had to present their lessons. And, Father, we, we know we fall short of your glory at times, Father, and we pray that you'll forgive us of that. And, Father, we thank you so much for the sacrifice you've given us. Through the blood of Christ, we have that hope of eternal life. We pray, Father, we pray that you'll be with us, guard, guide, and direct us, as we ask it all in Christ's name. Amen.